So, let's go somewhere. Two plus two equals four. This is an immutable truth, forever and always true. Two plus true equals four. If you are a mathematician, everything you build mathematically from that point can never violate that two plus two equals four, forever and always true. One of the problems with you atheists, okay, is that when you start getting off into the land of the philosophical, you violate essential truths. Truths as essential as two plus two equals four. Basic, simple truths. And once you violate them, you go off into philosophical abstractions that have no bearing to the truth because they've already violated the essential truth. So you're basically in la-la land, dealing with an abstraction that cannot be rooted in truth. And the reason you do not know this is that you do not examine beliefs that you actually have with any real, uh, with any real integrity. You do not examine your deeply held beliefs. You don't really look at what you believe because it, it, it wars against the truth of other things that you believe or other things that you know to be truth. What do I mean? Okay. Now this is very powerful evidence for an existence of God, but you have to cooperate with me. You have to work with what I'm saying, and you have to listen to it, and you have to think about it. What do I mean? If you are an atheist, then you say there is no God. If there is no God, then we are a cosmic accident. Period. Two plus two equals four. There is no third option. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the Christian God. It doesn't have to be Jesus Christ. We're not there yet. But if there's two options. We're either a cosmic accident, not designed, not fashioned for any purpose, with anything in mind, or there's a God some form of deity, some form of life force that would be a god. Even an eastern god, even a sort of, you know, wee the force type of thing. It's only two options. So, when you start dealing with things that you actually believe, if we're dealing in we're a cosmic accident, let's examine it. And you can see what things actually become not possible and you can decide for yourself because if you look at it we're a cosmic accident if you that's what you believe then you have to push that idea forward and see what it and see how irrational it becomes in light of other things that you may believe what do i mean for example personal destiny if you believe that you are personal destiny in any way shape or form then we can't be a cosmic accident there has to be a god the two are irreconcilable Forever and always. That is two plus four, and it's going to equal six. Forever and always. If we are a cosmic accident, there, there, there can be no such thing as a personal destiny. Michael Jordan was accidentally a basketball player. He wasn't born to be a basketball player. He just sort of picked up a ball one day, and he said, Oh, I'm good at this. Let's roll. Now, with, Gore, with Michael Jordan... It's sort of in the realm of the plausible. But if we actually examine the belief, it becomes irrational and illogical almost completely. But you have to examine with an open heart. You can't do it dishonestly. Already I can hear your dishonesty. Because you're already quarreling with things that are basic, simple truth. Basic, simple truth. Two plus two does equal four. There should be no quarrel with that. And if you are talk, talk, bringing up some philosophical abstract gobbledygook to refute that, you're lying. You're spinning. You're off in, in, in forever false land. And you can say whatever you want, but it's not true. It's violation of basic truth, simple truth. And you do it philosophically often. Because there cannot be a personal destiny if there is not if we are a random cosmic accident. Now let's really look at the world we live in and see how illogical that would actually be. Let's just take three examples. Beethoven, 
Shakespeare, and let's say Vincent Van Gogh. With Michael Jordan, it's pretty easy to go, oh, maybe, maybe that's an accident. Maybe he just, you know, fast and strong, and he happened to be good at hoops. When you start dealing with Beethoven, it becomes a lot harder to do, because it becomes almost completely irrational. It becomes something you, you, you're either forcing yourself to believe, despite the completely obvious evidence, the obvious evidence to your heart, that if you go, go right now, I, I, I 